Hello everyone. The title of this video is Determine Whether Graphs of Lines Are Parallel or Perpendicular. So each example I'm going to be doing in this video is taken directly from a free online textbook at openstax.org and I'm in their Algebra and Trigonometry text section 2.2 which is titled linear equations in one or two variables I think we're going to be seeing equa linear equations in two variables in this video and I'll be working under the objective heading uh, determining whether graphs of lines are parallel or perpendicular <coughs> pardon me so each example is either going to be an example from the reading in this section or from the try it problems in this section or from the exercises at the end of the section that are directly related to this particular objective. I would also request that whenever I start a new question, pause the video and try to work it out yourself first before watching me doing it and then comparing. Because if you're just watching me do these things and not practicing yourself, well the chances are you're not going to be learning all that much. All right, so I have all the examples written out on paper. All right, so here we have, you know, again it's the the instructions are to determine whether the given lines are parallel perpendicular or neither right, you know cuz two lines can be parallel they can be perpendicular or they neither of those things right. so before i get into example 1 here i do want to talk about you know what it means for two lines to be parallel and what it means for two lines to be perpendicular. Right, so I'll start with parallel lines. Now parallel lines are lines that basically they, they run in the same direction and they never intersect. So, for example, just a little quick picture here. If I have, you know, here's the xy plane. And if I draw two lines up that are parallel, let's so say here's line, a line, and then, you know, graph, and I draw another line that runs in the same direction but doesn't touch it, it will never cross it. So let's say, you know, the slope of this line is m1, you know, for the slope number one, slope of that line. And say the slope of this line, I'll call m2. Right. So lines are parallel if they have the same slope. They have equal slopes. So, you know, m1 equals m2. Also, though, right, and they have different intercepts. So not only do they have to have the same slope, right, run in the same direction, but they have to have different intercepts, right? So you see the y-intercept and x-intercept of this line are these two points, and the y-intercept and x-intercept of this line are, de are definitely different, right? Different y-intercepts, different x-intercepts and they have the same slope. 
All right, so that's what it means for lines to be parallel. Um, now, if two lines are parallel, you you might also see this little notation where they put like little arrow marks on them. You might have seen this in like a geometry text or something to indicate that they are parallel to one another. All right, those are little parallel marks, arrow marks. Now they have to have different intercepts because you know if they had the same slope and they had the same intercepts then they'd just be the same line, right? They'd be, they'd be touching everywhere, right? They'd overlap everywhere. So they wouldn't be considered parallel, right? So they have to have the same slope and different intercepts so that way they are never touching, right? They never intersect. Right, but they never intersect. Parallel lines, same slope, different y, uh, different y intercepts, different x intercepts. Okay, wonderful. All right, so uh, perpendicular lines do intersect, but they intersect in a special way. Right? They don't just cross any which way. They cross at a ninety degree angle or a right angle. All right, so perpendicular lines. So like, you know, the x and y axis are perpendicular. <laughs> See, they meet they meet at a 90 degree angle. And there's a little little box mark for, you know, right angle. Um, but you know, they don't have to be horizontal and vertical, right? Basically any horizontal line and any vertical line, you know, if a line is horizontal and a line is vertical, they're perpendicular. Um, but you know they don't have to be horizontal and vertical, right? Like so, say here's a line, and then I draw another line, you know, perpendicular to this. I'm going to try to eyeball a 90 degree angle here. Right. So here's another line, you know, perpendicular to that line. So again, I'm trying to. So they they meet at a 90 degree angle. Right. They intersect. But they don't, again, they just don't intersect. They intersect at a right angle, a 90 degree angle. And it's got to be at a right angle, though. All right. So, same thing here, right? You know, the, with, the, with the x and y axis. All right, so once again, I'll say the slope of this red line I drew is m1, and the slope of this orangish line. I drew, I'll call that M2. And uh, one special thing about the slopes of perpendicular lines, the product of their slopes is always going to be negative one. So if you take M1 times m2, you're going to get negative 1. Right, that's huge. you got to remember that. Now, another way that they say this is that the slopes are opposite reciprocals or negative reciprocals of one another. This is another way they might say this. Opposite reciprocals. Now, if you recall, you know, reciprocals, when you multiply reciprocals, you get positive 1. Opposite reciprocals are numbers that you multiply to get negative 1. All right, so some examples, you know, if m1 were 3, then m2, the slope of, the slope of a perpendicular line, would be negative 1 third, right? Take the reciprocal and then do the opposite, right? Make it, if it's positive, opposite would be negative, right? Uh, another example, if m1 were negative 4 fifths, then the opposite reciprocal would be positive 5 fourths, right? Just flip it over and do the opposite. 
right? Take the reci opposite reciprocals. If you multiply them, you get negative 1, right? Negative 4 fifths times 5 fourths would be negative 1. 3 times negative 1 third would be negative 1. Right. All right, so the product of their slopes is negative 1 or, or, not, not and, right, or, uh, one line is horizontal and one line is vertical. One line is horizontal and one line is vertical, like the x-axis and y-axis, you know. Right, the reason I have this case in here is because, remember, the slope of a horizontal line is zero. Right, the slope, m1 is zero, and the slope of a vertical line would be undefined. And those are not, you know, opposite reciprocals, you know. You know, some zero times undefined is negative one, uh, that makes no sense. But you still have perpendicular lines. Right, if one line is horizontal and the other line is vertical, right, clearly those would meet at a right angle. Right, just like, like I said, just like the x and y axis. Right. But if they're not horizontal and vertical, then the product of their slopes must be negative one. Right, they must be opposite reciprocals. Okay. Now, if this doesn't happen, and this doesn't happen, right? They're the same slopes with different intercepts. Well, then they're neither, right? Then they're neither, right? Because if two lines just intersect, you know, if two lines just intersect, like, you know, this line here and, you know, this line here, you know, sure they intersect, but notice they don't intersect at a right angle. Uh, this is this is not a right angle. So if they intersect, but not at a right angle, then we'll say they're neither, you know, parallel nor perpendicular. Right, they just meet. All right, and that's going to happen when they just have different slopes. Right, when the, if two lines have different slopes and those slopes don't multiply to be negative one, then they're just going to meet at some non-right angle. Right? They're just going to be neither parallel nor perpendicular. Okay. All right, so example one. Right, again, we're, in each of these examples, we'll be given a description of two lines, or either two equations or two descriptions of lines, and we're asked, you know, are they parallel? Do they have the same slopes and different intercepts? Are they perpendicular? You know, do their slopes have a product of negative one? Are they opposite reciprocals, or is one vertical and one horizontal? <coughs> Pardon me. Or, or neither of those. Now, my suggestion to you especially if we're given equations with both variables, you know, x to the first, y to the first. I'd suggest an easy way to tell if the lines are parallel or perpendicular or neither is to put them into slope-intercept form. Remember, that's y equals the slope times x plus, you know, the y-intercept or the y-coordinate of the y-intercept, y equals mx plus b. This way you can tell what the slopes of the lines are and what their intercepts are. And that will enable you to easily tell if the lines will be parallel or perpendicular or neither. Alright, so remember you just solve for y. Alright, so here I would add x and then divide everything by 2. So line a is y equals, you know, uh, 1 half x, or x divided by 2, and then 10 divided by 2 is, you know, plus 5. Right. So I'll say slope 1, right, m1 is 1 half, right? The slope of this first line is 1 half, and the y-intercept is at 5. Right. 
And the second line, I would just divide everything by 2. Right? It's easy to solve this one for y as well. Um, so you have 1 half x plus 2, right? 4 divided by 2 is 2. So they have the same slope, right? This is m2 is also a half, right? You see the slopes. So m1 equals m2, right? so they got the same slopes. And the y-intercept for this one is 5. The y-intercept for this one is 2. They have different intercepts. So that means, you know, putting both these together, that means these lines are parallel. All right, that means these lines are parallel. They run in the same direction, and they never touch each other. They never intersect. All right. And I could do this, you know, we could, we could, now if you have graph paper, that, that'd be great, but let me just, you know, I'll do a rough hand sketch here. You know, here's the XY plane as best I can. Now the first line, you know, Y equals half X plus five, that has a Y intercept of five, right? Zero, five. Zero, 5, and then a slope of 1 half, right? So to get to another point, I would just go up one unit, and then to the right two. Remember, the rise over run is 1 half. So the point 2, 6, right? 2, 6 would also be on this line. And, you know, here's the first line. Right, there's line A, right? What I call line A. The second line has a y-intercept of 2, right? so 0, 2, and also has a slope of a half, so rise 1, run 2, there's, you know, the point 2, 3 would also be on this line, and there's line B. And just from my little hand drawing, it looks like they're parallel. Right? And they should, they are, I mean they are, we saw that with the equations, these are parallel. Right, they're never going to intersect. They have the same slopes and different y-intercepts. Now, if you want a, a better looking drawing, let's go to a graphing calculator. Right, now you can pull one up. Uh, I have a, a I'll, I'll show you this, a free online graphing calculator. Right, website called desmos.com. And I'll enter the equations we were given the way they were given to us. We had 2y minus x equals 10. Right, that was line A. And line B was 2y equals x plus 4. And look at this, right? You see, when you can zoom out, you can definitely see these lines are parallel. They're not going to touch. Right now, obviously, you zoom out, it looks like they're the same line. But you know, if you <laughs> zoom in, they clearly are not touching. They're running in the same direction. You know, th these are parallel lines. It is very clear from our picture here as well. Great. All right, so I'll keep going back to this Desmos site to verify you know, what we say about these lines. All right. Next, uh, next question. All right. So again, we're given two lines. You know, line A, I'll call them line A and line B. Now look at this. They're both already in slope-intercept form. Uh, and again, you can really only put equations in slope-intercept form if both variables are present, which is happening here. Uh, the slope of the first line, you know, the slope of line A, which I'll call m1, you know, it's y equals mx plus b, the slope is 2, and the y-intercept would be at 7. Right. Uh, and I guess I'll write that, right, the y-intercept would be the point zero, 07. And the second line is again already solved for y and simplified. The slope would be negative one half, right? The slope is negative half. And you know, it, since they don't have the same slopes, I don't really need to worry about the y intercept, but I'll write it. The y intercept would be zero, negative four. But yeah, so they don't have the same slopes. 
So they're going to cross. Now the question is, do they cross at a 90 degree angle? Right? Do they cross at a right angle or not? So let's look at the product of the slopes. Take m1 times m2. So this would be, you know, 2 times negative 1 half. See, the 2's would cancel, and I'm left with negative 1. The product of their slopes is negative 1. That tells me that these lines are perpendicular. They, they must cross at a 90 degree angle, a right angle. So these lines are perpendicular. I know that without even graphing, right? because the product of their slopes is negative 1. Or you could look at these and say, these are opposite reciprocals. right? The reciprocal of 2 is a half, and then you know, we take the opposite, negative half. Or the reciprocal of a negative half is negative 2, and then you take the opposite, it would be positive 2. You know, these, these are opposite reciprocals or negative reciprocals. So if you see that right away, you can say, oh, the, these, these lines must be perpendicular. All right, so I'm going to do, again, a, a nice little rough hand drawing. Um, you know, and hopefully we see some perpendicularity between these lines. But then I'll go to the Desmos site, and we'll look at an, a much better picture. All right, so line A would have, you know, 0, 7 as the y-intercept, right? and then a slope of positive 2. So if I go up 2 and then right 1, I'll land on the line again. Right? Rise over run is 2 over 1. And here's, you know, here's line A. Right, well, there's line A. Right. Then line B has a y-intercept at negative 4, and I probably should have extended that. And the slope is, you know, negative 1 half. So if I go down 1, right 2, right, down 1, right 2, rise over run is negative 1 over 2. I'm at the point 3, negative 5, that would also be on this line. Right. And then... Uh, this doesn't look very good, actually. Let's say that's down here, actually. <laughs> and draw this line. Now, this line should be meeting the other line at a 90-degree angle. All right, it doesn't look very good with my hand drawing. But they should meet at a 90-degree angle, line A and line B. Right. Um, so to see a better picture of this, to see for more cert with more certainty that they do meet at a 90 degree angle. Let's go to that Desmos site. And I'm going to enter the equations we were given. Uh, line A was y equals 2x plus 7. There it is. Line B was y equals negative 1 half times x uh, minus 4. And yeah, I mean, it looks definitely better than what I had on my hand drawing. and. You know, I don't know if you can tell, but they they do look perpendicular to me. All right, it look like they're meet. This looks like a right angle, a 90 degree angle to me at this point where they're meeting. All right, wonderful. All right. But again, you should verify by hand though with the slopes, right? If the pro they're in order to be perpendicular, the product of the slopes needs to be negative one. Or again, one one line's vertical and one line's horizontal, but that is not happening here. Right. Great. All right, next question. All right, so here again, we're given two lines: line A, line B. And I'll put them in slope-intercept form. This is close. You know, y is alone, but I got to divide the other side, right? I got to simplify the other side. You know, take 3x plus 1 and divide them by 4. Right? We're dividing each term by 4. So this would be y equals, you know, 3 fourths times x plus 1 fourth. Right? Plus 1 fourth. 
So the slope of this line, m1, is 3 fourths. And the y-intercept would be 0, 1 fourth. Right? That would be the y-intercept. And then this line here, y equals 3x plus 2, that's already nice in slope-intercept form. The slope is 3, right? m2 is 3. And the y-intercept would be 0, 2. All right, so look at their slopes. Their slopes are different, right? Slope of 3 fourths versus a slope of 3. And these are not, you know, they're not the same, and they're not opposite reciprocals, right? If you take the product of the slopes, you have, you know, 3 fourths times 3, that's 9 fourths. That's, that's not negative 1. And uh, m1 is, like I said, not equal to m2. So, you know, from this line, the product of the slopes is not negative 1. That means they're not perpendicular. And from this line, you know, their slopes aren't the same, so they can't be parallel. So this line, these, these two lines are neither. I'm just going to write neither. Now they're going to cross. All right, they're going to intersect. If two lines have a different slope, which these do, if two lines have different slopes, they're going to cross each other. They're going to intersect. They just won't intersect at a 90 degree angle. Right? Which we'll see. Now again, I'm going to make a little hand drawing. And then we'll look at a better picture on the Desmos site. But, you know, X axis, Y axis. And, uh, you know, this has 0, 1 fourth. Right? So let's say here's 1, let's say a quarter is here. Right? So there's the y-intercept for line A, and then the slope is 3 fourths. So if I go to the right 1 unit and go up 3 fourths, I'll be at the point 1, 1. Right? 1, 1 would be, if x were 1, y would be 1. So here's line A. Again, very, very rough, rough drawing here. And then line B, you know, has 0, 2 as the y-intercept, and then a slope of 3, right, so up 3 units, and then right 1, you'd be at another point. And you see these lines are going to cross, right? here's line B, but they're definitely not crossing, you know, at a right angle, right, they intersect, sure, but that's definitely not a right angle. Uh, I can clearly see that from my picture. And you more e you'll more easily see this as well when I draw it on Desmos. Right? So again, the equations as they were given to me was y equals, you know, you had, the numerator had 3x plus 1, and then the denominator had 4. Right? And then the second equation was y equals 3x plus 2, and clearly you're seeing they're crossing, right, at this point here. And that's definitely not a 90 degree angle. See how small that one angle is and how big the other one is, right? They're not meeting at a right angle. So these are neither parallel nor perpendicular for, for certain. All right, great. All right, I just got one more, one more problem here. All right, so this time we are not given equations. Right, we're not given equations, but you know, we should be able to write the equations for these lines. All right, so line A, right, I'll start with line A. Uh, line A contains the points 2, 5, and 5, 9. So let's find the slope. Uh, again, I'll call this M1, the slope of line A. Remember how to find the slope. You know, when you're given two points on a line, it's the change in y, right? So 9 minus 5 divided by the change in x, and you take that change in x in the same order that you took the change in y. So I did second minus first, so I'm going to do the same thing for the x, 5 minus 2. So that's 4 in the numerator, 3 in the denominator, right? So this line has a slope of 4 thirds. 
And then I can put the equation, I can write the equation of this line in a point slope form very easily. Remember point slope form. If you go back to my video on finding an equation, finding a, lin finding a linear equation. Um, now this was, you know, y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1, where x1 and y1 are just a point on the line. So I'll just take 5, 9 here. Why not? All right, there's, there's x1, y1. So the equation for this line is y minus 9, all right, change in y equals the slope, 4 thirds, times the change in x, right, x minus 5, and then I'll put it in slope-intercept form by solving for y. So we got y minus 9 equals, you know, distributing the 4 thirds here, got 4 thirds x, and then minus 20 thirds, and then I would add 9 to both sides, but 9 is, you know, 27 thirds. You need a common denominator when you add or subtract. So line A has equation in slope-intercept form, y equals 4 thirds x, and then, you know, negative 20 thirds plus 27 thirds, right, plus 9 would be positive 7 thirds. So the slope, 4 thirds, y intercept at 7 thirds, right, or 2 and a third, right. So there's line A, an equation in slope intercept form. And you can double check that, you know, these two points they gave us are actually on this line. You know, when, when x is 2, y should be 5, right, and that makes sense. 8 thirds plus 7 thirds is 15 thirds, which is 5, right, and when x is 5, y should be 9, you get 27 thirds on the right equals 9, that's true. Alright, so that's a good equation. And then I'll do the same thing for line b. Alright, what's the slope of this line? Now again, I'll call the slope of this line, I'll call it m2. And line b has negative 1, negative 1 on it, and 2, 3 on it, so change in y. Right, 3 minus negative 1 in the numerator. Right and change in x in the same order in the denominator. So 2, two minus negative 1. All right, so 3 minus negative 1 is 3 plus 1, that's 4. 2 minus negative 1 is 2 plus 1, that's 3. So, so they have the same slope. All right, they have the same slope. And I can tell because uh, 2, 5, and 2, 3, right, if they were the same line, two, they both have 2, 3 on it. So they have different, they're going to have different intercepts. These are going to be parallel. But let's 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 continue on. So now I'll write the equation of this line, and I'll start off like I usually, I like to do in point slope form. All right, so let's pick at either of these points. I'll just take two three here, and call that x one y one. Right, so I got a point on, a point on the line, two three, the slope of the line, four thirds. So the equation for this line is y minus three, and y minus y one equals the slope, right, 4 thirds, times the quantity, and then x minus 2, x minus x1. And if I put this in slope-intercept form, you know, we can easily tell that they're parallel. So you have y minus 3 equals 4 thirds x minus 8 thirds, right, 4 thirds times 2. And then I would add 3 to both sides, which is 9 thirds, right, 9 thirds is 3. So the equation of this line is y equals 4 thirds x, and then negative 8 thirds plus 3, negative 8 thirds plus 3 third, 9, 9 thirds is positive 1 third. So they have the same slope. Right? They both have a slope of 4 thirds. And they have different intercepts. Right? This is a y-intercept of 7 thirds. This has an x-intercept, uh, a y-intercept of 1 third. So these are parallel lines. All right, these must be parallel. And right, let's see that. All right, let's see that. So going back to the Desmos site, and you can, again you can draw them by hand on graph paper or something. But we go back here. Now the equations I ended up writing one, the, for the first line, line A, was y equals four thirds times x. Uh, plus seven thirds. Right, there's that line. 
the other one was y equals 4 thirds times x uh, plus 1 third. And you see the parallel lines here. All right. And, uh, you know, let's just verify that these are actually the lines they wanted. You now, line A was supposed to have the points 2, 5, and the point 5, 9 on it, which I am seeing. All right, there, there's 2, 5 on line A, 5, 9 on line A. Okay, and then the other line was supposed to have negative 1, negative 1, which is on that, right? You see it down there. There's negative 1, negative 1 on line B, the second line, the purple line. And the other point was, you know, 2, 3. So I'm just double checking, right? And look at that. Both of those points are on that second line. All right, great. So definitely parallel. You see they're running in the same direction. They're, they're never crossing, never intersecting. They have the same slope and different intercepts. Wonderful. And that's, uh, that's it. All right, so again, you might be given something like this, but you, you, know, you should know how to write equations of lines by now. So like I said, I would recommend writing out the equations of these lines you know, in slope-intercept form if possible, right, if you have both x and y in the equation. Identify the slopes, the intercepts, and if they have the same slope and different intercepts, they're parallel. If they have the same slope and the same intercept, they're not parallel, they're the same line. All right, so they're neither parallel nor perpendicular in that case. If they have different slopes, check to see if those slopes have a product of negative one. All right, if they have a product of negative one, then the lines are perpendicular. And if they don't have a product of negative one, then they're not perpendicular. They're neither, neither parallel nor perpendicular in that case. All right, and if the lines, you know, if one ends up being horizontal and one ends up, one ends up being vertical, right, one has a slope of zero, the other one has a slope that's undefined, uh, then they're perpendicular, right? Great. All right, so I'm hoping that watching me go over these few examples, these four examples here, help you in some way when you're asked to determine if two lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither on your own. And thank you very much for watching.